Hello, um, I'm Jacob Barnett here with a set of trigonometry videos in honor of Pi Day. So, first of all, I'd like to introduce my cat. This is the tiger. And the reason why I'm holding him now will become evident in the future videos. Um, I am going to let him go since he's afraid of trigonometry. He, is, he doesn't do it. There you go. Okay, so anyway, let's begin. So, we're going to start out with the radian. So, first, before we do that, we are going to introduce the unit circle. So, first thing, let's draw a circle. And I'm not very good at drawing circles. And we're going to put the xy axis inside of it. Uh, that's just basically to quantify each of the points on the circle. And the center will be zero. Also, I'm just going to let the radius of the circle be one. You know, just for simplicity. So the first thing is we are going to introduce these radian things. And the way we're going to do it is like this. 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. Now you could wonder where I got that expression from. Basically, 360 degrees is the whole circle. So I go all the way around the circle. And here's 360 degrees because I went all the way around. And also this is going to be 2 pi radians. Now, the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r, the radius is 1, so then the circumference is just 2 pi. So, the angle is really just a measure of what the length of the circle is at a certain point. So, for example, here, this is half of the circle, so the length is pi. Here, it's a quarter, we only have that part, so it's pi over 2. Here, this is 3 quarters, 1 quarter, 2 quarter, 3 quarter. So this is 3 pi over 2, etc. So if you want some examples just to see how to convert between these two things, let's consider 45 degrees. Now naturally, one could suspect this is going to be pi over 4 because it's exactly halfway between 90 degrees and 0 degrees. So this is 45 degrees, it's halfway between here and 0, so half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. And then we should suspect that. But one thing we can do, we notice that 1 degree, I divide both sides by 360. This is pi divided by 180 radians, a simple division. And then I substitute in for 1 degree. This is going to be 45 divided by 180 pi's. And so this thing, you can calculate it's a quarter. So this is pi over 4. Okay, so hopefully now you have a solid understanding of what a radian is. And let's move on to what is a sine and what is a cosine. So, okay, so suppose I'm at an angle A, which could be anywhere. It could also be there or there, maybe there, wherever. But let's just suppose I'm at an angle A. Then I'm going to call the sine the height of the circle at that angle. So this height this is going to be the sine of A. And this distance here, I'm going to call it the cosine of A. And really, I, if you're trying to memorize why it's a cosine and a sine, you can think of, say, you know, C is for cat, the cat goes on the ground, or S is for a, maybe like a bird or a seagull. So, okay. But let's calculate a couple of examples. Let's consider we're at the angle zero. Then at this point, let's draw this out. So here is zero. Notice that there's no height, so the sine has to be zero. And the cosine, this is just one, because the radius is one. So the cosine of zero is one. Let's do a couple more basic points. Let's go to pi over 2. In this case, the height is 1, because that's the radius, but there's no x-axis distance, there's no horizontal distance, there's no length. So we get that the sine of pi over 2, this is 1, and the cosine of pi over 2, it should be 0. Okay, so now we have this, and we're going to do pi 2. At pi, there's no height, so the sine should be 0. Sine of pi equals 0. And the cosine, however, 
the cosine should be negative 1 because now I'm going a negative distance. As you can see, it's negative x-axis. Cosine of pi is equal to negative 1. Now, let's look at a couple of properties of these functions. Consider an angle A again. So, let's say here's A, and here's the sine, and here's the cosine. Now, then notice that the cosine, the sine, and the radius are all on a triangle. As you can see, they have a triangle. So, you can draw just the triangle. Here's the sine of A. Here's the cosine of A. And here is 1, since the radius is 1, and there's A. So, by the Pythagorean theorem, we know that this side squared plus that side squared is that side squared. A squared plus B squared is C squared. So, cosine squared of A plus the sine squared of A. It has to be 1 because it's on that triangle. In other words, now if I know the sine, I can determine the cosine up to whether it's plus or minus, and I can determine whether it's plus or minus whether I'm on this part of the circle or this part of the circle. And I can do the same with the sine. So let's just do an example where we can actually calculate the cosine using just the angle. Let's consider I'm again at our angle pi over 4. In this case, there's a symmetry. Um, notice that we're exactly halfway between here and here. So the x distance should be exactly the same as the y distance. So at pi over 4, we have the sine of pi over 4 is precisely equal to the cosine of pi over 4. Okay, and plugging into this formula, um, I can just... Plugging in, we have that the sine squared of pi over 4, substituting in for cosine, sine squared of pi over 4, this is 1. So 2 times the sine squared of pi over 4 is 1. By the way, for some reason, when they're, when they're saying sine squared, they always put the squared after the n instead of putting it in parentheses and then squared. I don't know why. They don't just put the squared after the n, just for simplicity. So 2 sine squared pi over 4 is 1, sine squared pi over 4 is 1, uh, half. And since the sine is positive, there's positive height, we get that the sine of pi over 4 is the positive root, which is the square root of 1 over 2, which is 1 divided by the square root of 2. Okay, this is just a neat way of calculating it. So, I mean, just at the end of it, you might just want to get this and this. You don't necessarily need to memorize that, but the sine of pi over 4 is always 1 over root 2. Okay, so let's change color. The next thing that I would like to do is I would like, let's see, so first of all let's look at negative angles. So again consider an angle A a for angle, and let's go to negative. Let's consider the negative of the angle. So here's the cosine of A, and here is negative A. And notice this line, which I, I'm not good at drawing circles. I know, you can just imagine this, but this line will drop down to here if it's a perfect circle, okay? So what this means is that the sine of A, this is exactly the opposite of that sine. These two heights are exactly the same. So therefore, we can get from this picture that the sine of A uh, is the negative of the sine of negative A. Because these distances are the same, but this is a negative height. And now we consider the cosine of negative A, but it's exactly the same. Nothing changed. It didn't get smaller. It didn't get bigger. It didn't go negative. So cosine of A is equal to the cosine of negative A. So these are some of the basic properties. Um, let's see. So another thing we can do is let's consider pi over 2 minus A. So let's just draw this carefully. Here is pi over 2 minus A, and here is A. Okay, so notice that if I rotate, okay, so let's first draw out where the sine is, sine A, and cosine of A, and 
this is the sine of pi over 2 minus a, and the, this one is the cosine of pi over 2 minus a. Now, one thing we can do, if we rotate this picture by 90 minus a degrees, or pi over 2 minus a, then we will notice that we match this triangle exactly up with this triangle. So they're similar, they're congruent. So what this means is this side length is the same as this side length, and that side length is the same as that side length. In other words, we can say that the cosine of pi over 2 minus a, this is the sine of a, and the sine of pi over 2 minus a equals the cosine of a. Okay, so in the next video, we'll explore some further properties of the sine and the cosine.